We're continuing our conversations with a number of different candidates running in these 2022 midterm elections. And today I'm going to be speaking with Bobby Python. Bobby is a Republican running for election to the United States Senate to represent Illinois. And uh, Bobby's worked as a portfolio manager. He's on the Republican primary ballot in Illinois. Uh, on June 28th, the winner of that primary will face incumbent Democratic Senator Tammy Duckworth in November. Uh, Bobby, great to have you on. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. You know, these conversations, as many in my audience always tell me, can be so illuminating because I, as someone of the left, want to hear the ideas of people that are Republicans and, and that are on the right. And sometimes the ideas make some sense and sometimes they don't. And we talk about it and we, we sort of figure it out and talk through things. So just to start, I've been doing this almost like as a just gut check to, to start figuring out where people are. So forgive me if the answer to this question is easy. Who's the current president of the United States? Who's the current president? Well, I guess. Um I guess it's a it's a funny it's a funny question. Is it really? Yeah, I do think it, it, we live in a very interesting time, where um, we have there's forces beyond our visibility that um, like supernatural, supernatural, not supernatural. Oh, there's 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 a group of extremely uh, well wealthy beyond wealthy, like su- uber wealthy mm-hmm. individuals, not just in the United States, but globally okay. that call the shots on both parties, not just one party. Okay. And and so it's it's almost as though there's a bunch of horse trading taking place behind the scenes. And so, you know, from that perspective, I do believe the will of the American people um, was ignored in 2020. And uh, the person that's in there is is the person that these globalists put in. And, and that's, 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 in, and I, you know, what I would tell you is I have overwhelming proof. I'll, I'll actually be releasing uh, proof from Ill- about Illinois tomorrow. General Flynn will be in town. I have a fundraiser for my campaign and Vandersteel, Doug Billings, Jovan Pulitzer, Liz Harris from Arizona, Edward Solomon, who's done work, mathematical work on proving that our elections Across the aisle, folks, the uniparty is very real, and frankly, it's undermining you and me. Okay, I'd but so Bobby, rather... that's that's a lot. So let's take it piece by piece. Sure. Who are the rich globalists you, that you're talking about? Well, there's there's a there's a there's a there's a corporate class. Okay. Uh, a global corporate class that exists that uh, considers themselves to have more rights. Than any individuals within any nation state. Who are they? CEOs of major global corporations. But can you name some specific people? So, like for example, um, you know, uh, think of BlackRock. Uh, BlackRock controls nine trillion dollars of assets through their their uh, their structure. Uh, he's he's been in control for over thirty years. Okay. Um, Who that's else? That's one. Uh, Bill Gates is one. Who? parlayed his fortune in Microsoft into um, other areas. Okay. Um, you know, so you can you can argue that Elon Musk is one who's who's kind of like leaning from left back to right, you know, possibly right for the first time in his life. Okay. That's another one. Um, you know, Michael Eisner of Disney used to be one before he retired. Mm-hmm. Uh, there, there, there's always this legacy wealth that we all know exists, like the Rockefellers, um, you know, the DuPonts, uh, for example, the DuPont family backed the individual running for U- U.S. Senate in Pennsylvania. There's like four thousand DuPonts. And, okay. You know, and and so it's it's a it's it's not it's not like one boogeyman. This is, I got it. This it's a bunch of people. Okay. And so, um, do you trust the results from Pennsylvania from earlier this week, where this right wing guy uh, who believes the election was stolen in 2020, Doug Mastriano, he won on Tuesday. Do you trust those results or do you question them? I think that um, that the results are 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 um, what's the word I would use is uh, they're they're probably manufactured to some degree. Yes. So I think it's it's across party lines. So they're, Doug didn't really win. Th- well, first of all, here's my question is if if we were playing a board game 
yeah. you and I, and two other people. And, um, and, you know, somehow we knew that there was some, some, some stuff flawed with the way the game was set up. Okay. And we were playing and, you know, one of us ended up winning. Right. But we knew that it was flawed massively. Would it really feel like a win? OK, you know? but I'm asking a different question. And I love this because we're really getting down to brass tacks here in in 20 in the November 2020 election. Joe Biden was awarded the state of Pennsylvania. Do you believe Joe Biden won in 2020 in Pennsylvania? Absolutely not. OK, and I, and I have. And let me explain how. But I but I, I'll let you explain it. But I want to just make sure we go sequentially. Two days ago, Doug Mastriano won in Pennsylvania's gubernatorial primary. Do you believe he actually won? I think that I, I know I have not looked at the data to make that assessment. Oh, so I looked at the data um, with regards to 2020. I actually broke out all 67 counties of the state of Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. and I showed how they had destroyed entire last names of voters from both Republican and the Democratic side to create the outcome that they wanted mathematically. And it showed up in the voter registration files in the final result. They literally destroyed 695,000 individuals' names that didn't vote the way their algorithm wanted. And it's a brilliant way to hide their crime. Because Why didn't a single court accept this? Well, first of all, uh, a couple things. Number one, uh, that that information was provided to the Georgia State Senate. Okay? Wait, well, hold on. You're talking about Pennsylvania, but now you're talking about I, Georgia. Because I, I I released those results. I testified before the Georgia State Senate with the Pennsylvania results. Because those votes were shifted to Georgia. They shifted votes from Pennsylvania to Georgia, to Georgia, like a stock portfolio algorithm. And who did it? People in Pennsylvania or people in Georgia? Somebody who ever has the power to control the, the voter registration files and the voting system of those two states did it. What person would have control over both systems in two different I, states? I think that there's multiple entities that probably have that the, the means to do that. Like so who? Let's just say the DNC and the RNC. Maybe they did it together for all I know. The DNC know and the RNC took control of the Pennsylvania and Georgia systems to shift votes from one to the other. But Biden won both. So what was the point in shifting them? Because because once again, I think they do some horse trading behind the scenes, both parties. OK. And they and they collude to create the outcome that they agree upon. OK. Based on these mega donors. All right. So to go back to the question, who's currently the president? Do you have an answer you can give? I think that um, I think that right now in in the international arena okay. of the world, uh, President Biden is recognized as the president of the United States. Do you believe that someone else, like maybe Trump, is actually the president? I have no information to make that kind of judgment or assessment. Okay, so I, you know, so no, I'm not living in a delusional world. Um, <laughs> Okay. You know, where, where somebody is thinking, you know, there's some kind of like uh, secret plot. shadow presidency you know. or something. like no, that. No, 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 no. I don't good. I don't believe in any of that. Oh, but good, I do. Good. I do agree with what Elon Musk said, uh, which he, he said, whoever controls Biden's teleprompter is really running this country. OK, I do so agree with that statement. There are so many fascinating things in a and a you did with a paper not long ago. Let me actually mention exactly what paper it is. Um, it was uh, with it, it was a local newspaper, Shaw Local, um, Sh the Shaw Local News Network. You did a Q&A. It's fascinating. Before we get on to the substance, Bobby, in looking at your answers, you do something that Trump does, which is you randomly capitalize words in the middle of sentences that aren't proper nouns. So like in your answers, you randomly capitalize the word farming and the word chemicals. And I could give you a dozen other examples. Can you help me understand sure. what's with the random capitalization? Yeah, my wife, uh, my wife, it's a big pet peeve of hers. So I'm, it's a wonderful question. And sometimes and it, it's very hard because when you write something, um, you, you don't always necessarily have people key in on certain words. So I do know that it's not grammatically correct to okay. capitalize. I've had this discussion with my wife plenty of times. And I, I say I capitalize it because I want to catch people's attention. Instead of oh. italicizing the word or bolding it, I do something that causes them to pause. 
And so I hope it was effective with you. You know, she thinks it's ineffective to communicate this way. I agree so with your wife. I agree with your wife. It made no it was such a distraction because I was like, does Bobby think these are proper nouns no, or no, what's no, going no, on? No, yeah. no I, okay. I. OK, so it's a personality quirk. Fair. And, you know, to your point, my wife has brought it up. Others have brought it up. Maybe I maybe it's time for me to stop doing that. Something to think about. OK, good. Yeah. So now let me ask you another question. In this same Q&A with the news local newspaper, when you were asked about January 6th, um, one of the things you said is you really want Antifa and Black Lives Matter investigated for what happened on January 6th. Do you have any evidence that Antifa and Black Lives Matter are the ones that committed crimes at the Capitol on that day? Well, first of all, um, I'm not sure if I linked it right with that question. I might have mentioned it in the same question. But I would have to double check. I don't have those notes in front of me. OK. But in terms of those two groups, anti First Amendment, which is anti Antifa, right? It's a play on words. It's pretty brilliant. Uh, no, it actually know, means anti. It means anti fascist. Well, it means anti First Amendment. Well, no, me. you'd have I to. The it. people, the people who it's sort of like if you told me my name means something different, they're like if I'm coming up with the name, I'm coming up with it because I know what it means to me. Right. Antifa says it's anti fascist. We have to go by what they are meaning with it, don't we? Well, I mean, that's it, it's you know, it's kind of funny for you to say that because on the left right now, there's people that identify as being a, a woman that are biologically a male, and you know, and and they could they could tell you that they have to have a certain pronoun. So I, I understand we're going to agree to disagree on what it means. Well, right. I, Let's I, the I've focus seen, is seen. so you were asked about the riots and what you said about that was yeah. that it was a peaceful gathering manipulated by the political establishment and you yes. want Antifa and BLM investigated for it. Yes, okay. I do think I do not have evidence you that don't. those two were involved. I, 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 you know, but I think that I do believe that people from both sides of the aisle, mm -hmm. the uniparty, corrupt Democrats, corrupt Republicans were both involved in staging this incident um, in, in, in a way that uh, if you notice what happened after that event, yeah. we never did get to see uh, any disputes with, you know, like the, you know, the, the floor of Congress to debate the merits of issues that arose in uh, the ballots properly in all these different states. They they kind of brush through that much faster as a result of that event. Well, yes, because they realized that it was going to serve no productive purpose, that at the end of the day, there wasn't really any substantive evidence or fraud, nor a legal mechanism to deny Joe Biden the presidency. And they said, it's the middle of the night. We all want to go home. Let's do what is obviously going to be the correct thing to do. You know what I'd love to do, David? Yeah, um, I'm going to if you don't mind. Yeah. Make sure you send me your email address, please. Tomorrow uh, you'll send me the evidence. Uh, OK, I will send you a deck yeah. uh, with regards to my presentation on some of the slides from tomorrow. Fine. And I'll and I'm more than happy if you have a Dropbox. OK, I'm glad to send you uh, some data oh, for you to review Dropbox. from the voter registration Dropbox files of the five battleground states, the work that I did, as well okay. as my write ups. And I'll gladly let you read it, debate it. It's all it's I'm all glad to do data. it. I'm yeah, glad to I, do it. But Bobby, okay. the, in terms of my question on Antifa and BLM, you believe people from both sides were involved. But I believe that before you, you said that you said you have no evidence Antifa or BLM were involved. That's what you said, right? I do not have evidence Good. that they were involved. I do think that they are based on other things that I've seen, but I don't have the smoking gun, so to speak. I'm not an investigator. I'm okay. asking that there there is an investigation held. And there have been so many which have found either that Joe Biden won by even more or like it doesn't sound like you're necessarily satisfied with investigations when they don't go your way. What type of investigation would you accept? Well, well, a couple things. Yeah. OK, so um, number one, when you when you look at um, um, let's you, let's talk about the state of Arizona. OK, right? yeah. that's that, OK. So Arizona. There's Maricopa was where the audit took place, mm -hmm. right? Everybody knows that. And you were involved with the cyber ninja stuff, right? I was involved with no, no, I was not employed during that audit. Okay. I did work on the on the on the voter registration files. Okay. And proved out 
that there was a set of voters inserted into the voter registration files that can be called upon when needed to sway the um, uh, the results in any particular precinct. And they had they all were registered to the same address. Is that correct? No, no, oh, they no. Weren't. that's not that's not the case that they were all registered to the same address. Oh, what what happens is in the, in the case. So let's let's talk about why you need very little to to rig an election, especially when you look at the results. OK, if if there was there's an average of about one thousand people per precinct in this country. So if the vote came out to be five oh one to four ninety nine. You're talking about what? You're talking about a two vote differential, right? 501 minus 499. Yes. So now if you wanted to uh, sway that result the other way from 501 to 409, you only need three votes. OK. You need to go from 501 to 502. So three divided by a thousand is 30 basis points. It's three tenths of one percent. So a thousand goes into one million a thousand times. So per million people that voted, three times a thousand is three thousand votes. So in the case of Arizona, three point six million approximately people voted. So three times three point six is ten point eight thousand. You only need to steal ten thousand eight hundred votes to affect the election if it was five oh one to four ninety nine and you put it to five oh two, five oh one, five oh two. But so this is an imaginary scenario where you're it's saying not, I'm gonna, if I, every I precinct. You, OK, all right, go ahead. No, but here, here's what I would say. The data is when when you mapped out the data across the 700, I think it was 742 precincts within Maricopa. I think I believe there were 742 precincts and you calculated what was the number that would be needed in advance to to rig the election. And you could generate it before a single ballot was cast. And the numbers came out the way they came out on Election Day. You would call in the question, mathematically, how can somebody come up with the algorithm for how to do this before a single ballot was cast? What evidence do you have that anybody did that, though? You're just looking at the I numbers have, after. The the, I'm more than happy to send it to you. Okay. I'll send you Edward Solomon's it's work. It's coming out tomorrow, right? Well, the, well, I was explaining Arizona. Tomorrow I'm going to explain Illinois. Oh, so I okay. live in Illinois. I've never exposed Illinois, but okay. I'm going to expose uh, the Senate race for Durban that okay. took place in 2000, and the Senate race, the U.S. Senate race for Duckworth, my opponent, if I make it through the primary right. in 2016. And I will show you the data. I will do a video, actually. I, I'm not sure if we're going to live stream it, but I will gladly send you my supporting documentation, Please. my video, and and I will and I'll explain um, how they're modifying the voter registration files and using optimizers as well as random functions that exist in Microsoft Excel to oh. do this. Anybody will be able to replicate what I'm talking about if they have Microsoft Excel. Okay. Bobby, I've got to ask you because we are out of time. What would what evidence, if it could be presented, would convince you that Joe Biden just won in 2020? Does it, what, is there such evidence, if anybody could show it to you, that would make you say, you know what, Biden won? I think the evidence that would convince me that that Biden won is is if you said, Bobby, in your state of Illinois, yeah, uh, there's 8.9 million people registered to vote. Okay. And um, of those 8.9 million people, um, this is how many that you know were between you know the legal age to vote, you know, 18 plus, and um, um, they 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 exist in our society in the form of um, you know there was six million tax returns filed, or there was um, 150 you know like 500,000 social security checks paid into the state. Or you know, two hundred thousand, uh, you know, COVID checks that were cashed, and and if 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 I can see the the receipts of the economic activity of the of the state of who's doing these votes, and it ties out to our federal tax receipts or our federal spend, you know, because I'm not saying you know I, I don't if somebody's retired and they don't have a t a, a tax return, 
and they still get government money, they still have a right to vote. So I'm all for like, oh, this is how many received the check that voted. This is how many paid taxes that voted. And then if, if all of a sudden there's no record that they exist, economically speaking, you know, um, you know, like that would that would put this to rest for me real quick. I'd be wow. like, OK, it this seems is we have all of that. That's strange. Listen, no, but Bobby, we don't have it. Are, we is, don't have it. Uh, we don't have it cross reference with the actual votes that take place in our system at the current time. Is your assertion that Joe Biden didn't even really win Illinois? Is that what you're claiming? I don't know if he won Illinois. You don't know. I, 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 I know that he ran. He I could tell you right now that in Illinois, based on my my research, there's well over 1.6 million fraudulent registrations in the state of Illinois at the present time. OK, but so you're, you're saying that even Illinois, which was won by Democrats in 2016, 2012, 2008, 2004, 2000, et cetera, uh, 1996. I mean, you're, you're saying that those were all fraudulent or just in 2020, the Democrat. Didn't I think really that win. we need to look at all the elections going back at least 20 years since the machines entered the scene. Oh, boy. So so you think maybe even like Bill Clinton's win in Illinois in 92 was fraudulent. I didn't say that we didn't have machines back then. Oh, OK. 96, so, 1996. The machines came in after this criminal by the name of George Bush. Uh, I believe he stole the election from Al Gore. Uh, okay. In Florida with the hanging chat inc inc uh, incident. With, but in 2000 and 2004, where the Dem where Al Gore and Kerry won Illinois, even though Bush had the machines, you think those no, no, might no, have no, been no. fraudulent? Hold on. The machines came in after the 2000 election. OK, so 2004. Yeah. So I'm saying is what I'm saying is that 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 event where George Bush stole the election with the hanging chat incident with his yeah. brother, who was the governor at the time. Yeah. Jeb Bush. Yeah, yeah. Um, that ushered in these machines. And I think ever since these machines have come online, I think it makes it easy to possibly manipulate and steal elections uh, across the whole the whole ticket. Okay. And look, the math will show it. I, I'm going to I'm very happy. I, I, I will send you Please. all of my stuff. And, and, uh, and, I, and it's all going to be presented tomorrow. I have over, I think, about 300 plus people coming tomorrow. I invited the press to be there. Good. I, I, uh, and and uh, I will I will open it up for peer review and people that love math and statistics. They can look at it themselves and see what I'm talking about. And love it. If you wanted to talk about it after you go through it and pick it apart. I'm Allow glad. me to. do. That. Yeah, I, I will take a look at it and then we will go from there. And, you know, Bobby, I have a feeling you're going to take these beliefs to your grave. I don't think you'll ever be disabused of any of these thoughts. I don't I don't think the evidence really matters. I think I think that. Um, you know, I think I think that what will play out will play out. But yeah. this is what I do. Can I just say, say this? Yeah. Regard, when, when this plays out the way it's going to me be meant to play out. Yep. My biggest hope about this whole thing. Yes. Is that when you have a difference or I have a difference and who we back that goes in, you know, to, to run for office, that your vote is not diluted one iota and my vote is not diluted. Beautiful. And right now, I don't think either one of us, I do not have any confidence that my vote is not being undermined in some way or your vote might not be undermined in some way. And so I will continue to work to get that solved, because at the end of the day, we're all Americans first. We and are. I don't care, and, I don't care um, about the left. Look, my my the godfather of my son yep. is 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 a huge Democrat. He um, I think he actually. You know, he calls Pelosi his girl when he was living out there. He's an airline pilot and he's the godfather. I, you know, last yeah. year, and I love the guy. I've known him over 20 years. We disagree, but we both want it to be fair. You know, and I think I think at first he was skeptical. I've sent him information over the past year. He sees it. He's more open minded to seeing if it truly is taking place. But the reality is, is in my state of Illinois, they're both in on it, folks. Both the Republicans and the Democrats are doing this to us. And I don't think it was just in 2020. I think it goes back at least two decades. All right. Well, we're going to look at all of it. We've been speaking with Bobby Python, who is running for U.S. Senate in Illinois. He is in a primary, which is at the end of June. If he wins, he will face incumbent Democratic Senator Tammy Duckworth. Bobby illuminating. I can't that quite literally you're lit up. Your face is completely lit I, up. I know, by what, what's going on with that? Why I don't know. Just, but it's been it's been an illuminating conversation metaphorically and literally. 
Hey, can I can I mention to your viewers to check me out at BobbyPyton.com or on Telegram? Yes, and and please get us the data on Illinois, and we will look at it very strongly. Awesome. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, David. Thank you.